IPv6 can be a little scary, but it's not too bad if you start by comparing it to IPv4, which is just what we'll do in this video. We'll start this video talking about IP version 6 addressing, comparing that to IP version 4. Then we'll move on to talk about how packet forwarding works, that is, IP version 6 routing with IP version 6 packets. And then we'll talk about some related protocols, in particular, IP version 6 routing protocols. You can find all this content also in the official CERT Guide, Volume 1, Chapter 25. Now, as always, stick around to the end, and for those of you that do have the books, I'll tell you how to best use the books with these videos. And for everybody, I'll tee up a review activity to help you study and review after you've finished the videos. Also, by the way, my job these days, as I've chosen to make it, is to continue to keep the official CERT guides up and going over the coming years, but also to be all in on this YouTube channel. And you can help with that. And in particular, today, let me focus on leaving comments. Please leave me comments. Happy to hear from you. And if you think, well, I'm not sure what to say, well, here are a few suggestions over on the right. Just whatever's on your mind in your CCNA journey, drop me a line. Take 30 seconds and do that. It's always appreciated. All right, let's jump in and talk about some IPv6 fundamentals. For IP version 4, the addresses are dotted decimal numbers. They represent a 32-bit binary number. And the addresses are assigned per interface. That is, PCs with Ethernet NICs will have an IP version 4 address assigned, something like 1.1.1.11. And then there'll be a router somewhere connected into that same subnet. And it, too, will have an IP address. And it'll be in the same subnet or network. For instance, on the left here, it's showing all the addresses here begin with one because they're part of network one. So it's addressing per interface. And then if you have other interfaces on a router, they're in different subnets. So the dividing line between groups of addresses called sub, uh, subnets or networks is the router itself. So here, this core router, it has an address that begins with four in this second set of addresses in network four. And then on this third set of addresses that begin with five, Network 5, it's got address 5111 here on this interface. So that's a general idea of how addressing works, per interface addressing with IP version 4. And IP version 6 follows the same standard. First off, what's the address look like? Well, with IP version 6, it's a 128-bit number. So if you were to write it out in binary, well, that's only 32 bits. So you'd need space to write four total rows. Now, it doesn't fit in the width of the PowerPoint slide, and it wouldn't be readable in a font that would you'd be able to see in the video frame. So this is just wrapped around from here to start here, and here to start here, and so on. So there's 128 bits. Now, to write it out more simply, we use hexadecimal. So each four binary digits represents a hex value, so 0010 from our conversion table converts to hex 2, as we see down here. Four zeros converts to hex 0. Four zeros converts to hex 0. 0001 converts to hex 1, and so on. And you can follow this hex conversion chart over here and follow all these sets of four digits, four binary digits up above, to figure out this conversion to see the nice and short 32 hex digit long IP version 6 address. Much shorter than the binary version, but it's still pretty long, right? But there's an IP version 6 address. But the style of addressing follows what we saw with IP version 4. So if you had those same four PCs and we've enabled IP version 6 on those, they're going to have IP version 6 addresses for each interface. Now, in the slide, it doesn't fit all in one row, so to speak. So it wraps around here, this 32 hex digit long number to fit in the slide, all right? So here you've got the four PCs. They've each got an IP version 6 address. And just like the convention with IP version 4, where all the addresses in the subnet begin with the same first part of the address, here, all the addresses begin with 2001 dogbaker 80001 And in IPv6, 
We don't call that the subnet, but we call it the prefix. All right, so they've all got the same prefix over here on this left-hand side. Now the router needs to connect to that subnet, that prefix, so it can act as the default gateway or default router. So there it is, there's its IP version six address. Notice its prefix is the same as the others, and it's got a unique number in the second half of the address. That's called the interface ID, by the way. So the same kind of convention for what gets an address as with IP version four. So as you might imagine, with WAN links, like you see over here, we'll have a prefix that's different for this WAN link, and then there'll be IP version six addresses on each end of the WAN link that will be in that same prefix. The beginning part of the number will match what we see for the prefix ID, but they'll be unique for the interface ID. Notice the different values 0001 and 0004 there. And then for that other WAN link, yet a different prefix ends in five. The addresses within that prefix on this WAN link have that prefix ID hidden in the address, but different interface ID values making the addresses unique in that subnet. Finally, Subnetting happens in IP version 6. Most people call them subnets, but again, the formal term is a prefix ID. So you might see a planning chart for a design like this that, say, has a LAN on the left, maybe one on the upper right and lower right now with those same two WAN links. So we need five subnets or pr five prefixes with prefix IDs. And you'll see a prefix ID. Often, it's the first half of the IP version 6 address structure for 64 bits or first 16 hex digits. So here we see 2001 dog baker 80001 and here's the last four hex digits 0002 last four hex digits 0003 0004 and 0005 making each of those prefix IDs unique. For the major points, IP version 4 routing, that is packet forwarding, works much like IP version 6. Now there are differences in detail, but let's talk about that. With IP version 4, PC1 there, it has a default router setting that refers to the IP address of a router in the same subnet, in this case R1, so that it knows to send packets to R1 when the destination is off subnet. Then R1 has an IP version 4 routing table and R1 will match that packet's destination address to its IP version 4 routing table and choose to forward the packet, say, to router R2. R2 has a routing table. It'll compare the destination address in the packet to its routing table and choose to forward the packet on to, say, server S1 over on the right in this example. Also with IP version 4, to make that happen, those packets can't travel over the links without additional headers. So if we take that IP version 4 packet, the sending host, PC1, has to encapsulate it, in this case, in an Ethernet frame because it's connected to an Ethernet LAN. So it's got this LAN header and trailer, Ethernet LAN header and trailer, as it travels over the Ethernet. And the destination MAC address in this LAN header refers to R1's MAC address on that left-hand interface. So when R1 receives this frame, it can say, hey, is it destined to my MAC address? If the answer is yes, R1 will, quote, de-encapsulate the packet. That is, get rid of the LAN header and trailer and process that IP version 4 packet, placing it inside a new data link layer frame with the appropriate data link layer header and trailer for the outgoing interface. Now that frame travels over to router R2. When R2 gets it, the address in the data link header refers to R2's data link address. R2 gets rid of the WAN header and trailer, de-encapsulates the IP version 4 packet, re-encapsulates it into a new data link layer frame, and forwards it on to server S1. So that's been true of IP version 4 for forever. And the same basic process works with IP version 6. So for the forwarding, 
Hosts will have an IPv6 address and they'll know of a router on the same subnet and that's where they'll send packets that are destined off subnet. R1 and R2 will have IPv6 routing tables with a list of IPv6 prefixes and it'll match the destination address in that packet to its IPv6 routing table, R1 deciding to send the packet to say R2, R2 then sending the packet over to server S1. Encapsulation works the same as well. PC1, before it can send that IPv6 packet, has to put the packet inside a data link layer frame. The destination MAC address will refer to R1's MAC address, same old MAC address. When R1 receives it, it decides to process it. It'll get rid of the original data link header and trailer, re-encapsulate the message into a new data link header and trailer, send it on its way. When it's received over at router R2, R2 will de-encapsulate, discard the old data link header and trailer, and re-encapsulate into a new data link frame, just as we talked about with IP version 4. Let's talk about a few related protocols now. Routing protocols are huge, of course. OSPF is very popular. The version of OSPF that was in use with IP version 4 before IPv6 came along was OSPF version 2. So there it is. Most people didn't mention the version 2. It was just the version you were using. When IP version 6 came out, OSPF was updated. The standard was changed, and they numbered that version 3 when it first came out. When it originally came out, it was updated specifically to support IP version 6. Now, RIP was still popular back in the 1990s. The RIP version that most people would use back then was RIP version 2, as it turns out. Instead of making a new version of RIP and calling it RIP version 3, the one to support IP version 6, they named RIP Next Generation or RIP NG. And yes, that was a takeoff on the old Star Trek series. Uh, yeah, kind of fun stuff. But RIP NG now, RIP is pretty much grown into disuse today, but that's the name of it. Now, EIGRP is kind of a different story. There's no standard that you can go grab for EIGRP because it's Cisco proprietary. So people didn't call the EIGRP that pre-existed in those days. They didn't call it EIGRP v4. But when EIGRP existed beforehand, then IPv6 came out, and Cisco updated EIGRP to support IP version 6, people just came to describe the protocol as EIGRP v4, the old way for IPv4, and EIGRP v6, the new protocol that supported version 6. Yet another variation, then, is BGP. Before IP version 6, there was a BGP version 4. It worked great. It's very extensible. Great. Then to support IP version 6, multi-protocol BGP came out. Multi-protocol meaning IP version 4 and IP version 6. There's lots more there to BGP. Now, a few of the other protocols you'll come across. ICMP has been part of the TCPIP stack from the beginning. There was no need to call it something special before IP version 6. It was just ICMP. But once IP version 6 came out, we came to describe the old ICMP for use with IPv4. We called it ICMP v4 in reference to IP version 4. And the new protocol definitions for ICMP, ICMP v6 in reference to IP version 6. Then one more protocol to mention, IP version 4 makes use of address resolution protocol to dynamically discover the MAC address of other hosts in the same subnet. Well, ARP goes away with IP version 6, and it's replaced by this broader and more capable protocol called neighbor discovery protocol. So you've got the books. Now you've watched this video. What do you do? Well, the book section from Chapter 25, Section 1, it's called Introduction to IPv6. If you watch this video and the related video that's linked into the description, you're fine. You could skip that section even. It's always good to read the book section, but you could get away with skipping it. We've covered all the topics, if you will. So that other video is basically a video about IP version 6 being significantly more scalable with its address structure than IP version 4. Then there's this video that compares 
version 6 to version 4. Then after you've watched both those videos, later you can do this terminology mind map activity that I'll describe next. So what is that? Go do the activity. If you know you'll only do it if you do it now, do it now. Better for you if you'll wait a day or two to give your brain a little time to forget and then interrupt that process. And it's best if you'll schedule it so that you don't forget to come back and do it. So what do you do? You take this seed term, IPv6 address, put it in the middle of your workspace, a piece of paper or a mind map app, and think of all the terms you can remember from these two videos or any of your other learning about IPv6 and exercise your brain a bit. Hey, thanks for watching the entire video. As always, you can help me with likes, comments, and share. It really does help the channel out. Feel free to engage as much as you care to. And if you're brand new to the channel, of course, subscribe if you think you'd like to see more videos like this one. It's always appreciated. Good having you here. Talk to you soon.